Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm here with a AWS DevOps project that you can use for your resume. And trust me, this is such a project where a AWS DevOps engineer or AWS administrator must have already done it in their past or they are currently doing it. So for somebody who don't have practical experience or you know, you are looking for a problem statement on AWS that you can put on your resume and also explain that how did you solve this problem statement, then this is the video which you are looking for. So watch this video very carefully where I'm going to talk about the project description. I'm also going to explain you about the project and I'll also provide you the project overview. And additionally, I'll tell you the advantages or what did you achieve by using this project. So I have everything that you can put on your resume and you know, you can also try out the same things practically so that you know, you get a real feel of AWS DevOps and uh, you can be confident saying that, okay, I have done something on AWS where uh, a DevOps engineer does it day to day or uh, where I have come, uh, you know, where you have completed some practical uh, scenarios on AWS. Okay, so without wasting any time, let me quickly uh, jump on to explaining you what is the project name. So this project name is called as AWS Godrails. Some people call it AWS Godrails, but to effectively tell it, what we are trying to do in this project is monitoring and auto healing AWS with respect to complaints. So if I break and explain you what is compliance, compliance is nothing but your organization will define certain rules on AWS, right? So it's not that just you moved from on-premise to AWS and everything is done. No, you have to define certain rules like you have to define the security uh, rules on your AWS. So it's not that everybody can open uh, their AWS infrastructure to uh, outside and everybody can peep into your uh, ecosystem or your infrastructure and they can hack things, right? That's not possible. So you have to define some security rules. And the second thing is you also have to take care about the billing. So one of your major motivation to move from on-premise to cloud is uh, to reduce the maintenance overhead. But the other motivation is also about the billing. So this project will tackle two things. One is security. I mean, how I am auto healing the security of my AWS if there is some issue with the security. And the other thing is how I am going to reduce the billing. So these are the two things this project is trying to address. Now, coming to the project description. So automation that constantly watches the creation and modification of AWS resources. So whenever somebody is creating an AWS resource, whether it's S3 bucket, whether it's EBS, whether it's EC2 instance, or whether it's some IAM related uh, rules or policies, this AWS project will look for the deviations if there are any deviations. So what do I mean by that? So let's say your organization, your solution architects or your uh, higher management has decided that anybody who creates an EBS volume on your AWS, they should only be create an, creating an encrypted EBS volume. So anything that is unencrypted is not allowed. Or whenever somebody is creating an S3 bucket, they should definitely have a bucket policy that is attached to it so that you know, only uh, restricted people can access your S3 bucket. So these are some of the things your organization has defined for security. So now your project will constantly monitor and it will look for deviations. If somebody has created S3 bucket without bucket policy, what your project will do is it will not only report saying that, okay, you have created an, uh, you know, bu S3 bucket without bucket policy. You will send out mails to them. You will also report to your higher management, but you will also auto heal it. By auto healing means, you will immediately attach a bucket policy, the default bucket policy, and you will say that, okay, now everything is fine on my AWS infrastructure. So you understood, right? How important this project is and why everybody has to use this project. So let me repeat, automate, I mean, what we'll try to achieve with this project, we'll try to automate the constantly, I mean, we'll try to watch the creation and modification of AWS resources. We'll try to find deviations, from the desired baselines, or we can also say from the complaints, and this project can even automatically remediate some issues. If there are any issues, this project will automatically remediate as well. So in short, this project can also be called as AWS Godrails, but to explain in a better way, you can say monitoring and auto healing AWS with respect to complaints. So now this is it. So this is the architecture of the project. So this is the high level design that I, uh, I just drew it uh, with uh, draw.io and I just took a screenshot and pasted it here. But you know, you should also understand that this project can be enhanced even more. 
as per your convenience but this is a very basic high level design of this project and uh, once you understand it you can complicate it by your own right you don't even need my help you can say okay abhishek and i can add one more service here you can do it but this is the basic services that you need to orchestrate this project so what are the services that are involved we'll come step by step and then i'll explain you the high level uh, how the services are orchestrated or integrated and what are they trying to achieve so the services that i'm using here is uh, aws cloudwatch aws lambda all of these services can be auto healed or auto remediated so if user is creating any uh, any of these services uh, against the compliance of your organization then your lambda function will auto remediate this one it will report it will send out notifications and finally it will store the information in the s3 bucket like what are the services it fixed or what are the uh, services that users created out of compliance and you will be able to report the information on power bi it can be power bi it can be tableau whatever uh, reporting tool that you want to that you want to use but uh, in this case i choose power bi uh, where you can use power bi as a reporting tool your management can simply come and say that okay so these number of things people have uh, created out of complaints out of deviations and uh, you can also store the information such as uh, you know just an enhancement to this project you can also say that uh, somebody has created an ebs volume 6 months ago and they have not even used it right so your lambda function using cloudwatch can watch for this aws uh, you know uh, stale uh, aws resources and your lambda function can also put that information on power bi where your management can come and see okay so these are the stale services which nobody is using but we are paying for aws right so your management can say that okay by deleting all of these things i can save x amount of uh, dollars or x amount of rupees so let me do this so this is the project that we are doing now let's do let's go step by step and let me explain you in a very detailed way okay so firstly let's say that there is a user called john okay now what john has done is john has created one of these services let's say john has created an uh, ebs let's start with ebs so john has created an ebs volume and what john has done is he has created ebs volume he is very new to the organization he did not read the organization rules so he said that okay i'm creating an ebs volume and while creating ebs volume he said that i am not attaching any kms key or i'm not att attaching anything with respect to uh, encryption not aes or no kms and he just created an ebs volume so as soon as he creates what happens in aws so you should understand that in aws you can always create rules in uh, cloudwatch which will watch for the resources right so there are uh, custom uh, like you know you have already have some predefined things in cloudwatch but you can also define your aws apis in cloudwatch such a way that cloudwatch can handle any custom request as well so by default this request is available in cloudwatch but let's say you want to handle some request that is not uh, directly available in cloudwatch you can also define uh, your rules in cloudwatch and cloudwatch will send this information to a lambda function so you can configure this lambda function as a target for your for your cloudwatch so what happens in this case is john has created an unencrypted ebs volume aws cloudwatch understood this one and aws cloudwatch said to the corresponding lambda function where devops engineers or aws administrators will write the code right so once you receive the information from cloudwatch what you will do in your lambda function is using python or using node js you will receive this request and you will say okay so there is an ebs volume called xyz and this ebs volume xyz does not have any encryption so using lambda function you will attach encryption to your unencrypted ebs volume and once you do this right once you auto heal all of these or any of these uh, aws services you will store this information in s3 bucket not only you will store this information in s3 bucket in any s3 bucket you can create a centralized s3 bucket and you can store all of these uh, informations but apart from doing this you can also send out notifications right from lambda functions using uh, aws service you what you can do is you can also send out notifications so you send out notification uh, you send out an email notification or notification to slack whatever you want to and once you do it the other thing that you can also do is you can put that information in s3 bucket and power bi can read information from your s3 bucket like you know power bi can use your aws s3 bucket as a data source and using this aws s3 bucket as a data source power bi will populate this information and it will show to your management what all uh, like 
similar to john other people might have also created uh, something out of compliance intentionally or unintentionally right there might be a hacker or there might be somebody who was who is intentionally doing it or people like john who is unaware he is doing it unintentionally but no matter what it is you can put all of this information in a power bi and end of month or end of week you can report to your management or even every day you can say your management that okay uh, our team has found out these things and uh, which are going out of compliance which are unused which are wasting resources on aws which is costing us a lot of money and uh, looking at power bi they will understand okay so this is the uh, things that you have done okay i appreciate your work now let me take action so management will take action either by either through you or without you right it depends on management some management wants to take action through devops engineer saying that okay so in future uh, write an automation script uh, similar to your lambda function write one more lambda function uh, which uh, takes care of these things or management can take action saying that okay they can investigate or they can find out why somebody is trying to do it uh, unethical or out of compliance no okay so this is about the project no what did we achieve or what is the purpose of this project right so whenever you are an interview people will ask you okay so this is a very good project but what did you achieve so this is also answered in this video here what we will achieve is one so point number one we will achieve reduce in cost or billing on aws right one of the major purposes or one of the primary purpose of moving to aws is like I told you, one is maintenance overhead, the other is obviously billing. If somebody says that I am moving to AWS, I know that I'll increase billing, then it's not valid, right? So if your organization is moving to AWS, they'll also be looking at billing. So either they have to be at the same point of on-premises or if you move to AWS and you're reducing the billing, then it is even more than good. And ideally that, that should be the case. So by writing such things, you know, here in this case, I just told you about uh, a uncompliance, unencrypted volume that is created by John, but you can use the same ecosystem or you can use the same orchestration to identify stale services. What is stale service? Stale service is something that somebody has created, but they are not using it. Like an ABS, EBS volume that is created an year ago, but nobody is using it. S3 bucket that are created a couple of years back, but nobody is using it. So even you can enhance this entire ecosystem to also reduce the cost and billing on AWS. The second important thing is compliance security. So compliance is very, very, very important. Let's say your organization does not have any compliance rules. So what happens? Anybody can create anything as they wish, like they can create S3 buckets, which are exposed to outside world. They can create EC2 instance, which are exposed to outside world. They can do whatever it is, right? So your organization, solution architects, management define a specific compliance or security policies to your organization. Now, if somebody is going out of compliance, so there has to be some mechanism to identify. So your project will also identify these compliance things. Now, third thing, reduce manual maintenance efforts. So let's say you don't have all of this system in place. What you have to do is you have to manually go and search for these things, right? So let's say you're, you have 100 AWS accounts and uh, in each AWS account, four regions are operational. So literally you have to look for 400 regions for unencrypted EBS volumes, uh, uh, you know, S3 buckets without policies, IAM policies without specific, uh, which are out of compliance. So imagine the number of things that you have to do. So manually, if you have to do the, do the all these things, it will take weeks and months. So to avoid these things, you have automated the entire thing using AWS Godrails or whatever uh, the project description that I have provided here. And we have achieved a terrific automation which reduced manual maintenance effort. Now point number four. The reporting is also automated, right? So let's say the Power BI uh, reporting is not automated. What happens is people have to look at the S3 bucket or you know you did not even, you just stopped at uh, auto healing part. So in such case, what happens even more is that people don't even have information in S3 bucket. They don't even have information in Power BI. So it is again impossible to track what you have auto healed. So you have done very good job in auto healing. But if your management asks what you have done, like what did you auto heal or what are the things that have went out of compliance? Let me take action against those people, but you don't have information. So by using this project, you have automated the reporting as well. And finally security. I don't even have to talk about security because we have done a lot of good things which will uh, improve or enhance your AWS security here. 
so this is about the project i hope you like the project you like the project description project high level design i have provided everything right i have provided the project name project description project high level design we have uh, you know when somebody asks you what did you achieve or what is the outcome of this project we even have defined all of these things so i think this uh, answers your questions and uh, people who are looking for this video i hope you found this informative and i hope you found this useful so please don't forget to like this video comment this video share this video as much as possible because there are a lot of people who have been doing or who have been learning devops but they are finding it very difficult to find some problem statements and uh, you know they want to find a problem statement and they want to solve it and they want to put it on their resume so this video i have done for all of you so please try to share it as much as possible so someone who is in need will be benefited out of this video and finally don't forget to subscribe uh, to my channel to you know uh, find more such interesting videos i hope you like this video and uh, thank you so much i'll see you in the next video take care